Hello everyone, once again, I would like to welcome you to this presentation on biochemistry, particularly on the topic of glycolysis. So, I'm Dexter Pajarito. In our previous video, we learned that digestion is a process by which large molecules such as carbohydrates or polysaccharides are digested to form smaller molecules such as glucose and other monosaccharides. Proteins are also digested to form amino acid. And when triglyceride or fats and oils are hydrolyzed, they will be converted into fatty acids and glycerols. We will see what happens to glucose. Remember that glucose comes from the degradation of starch, which is a polysaccharide. Now, once inside the cell, the glucose will undergo transformation by which it can be converted into two molecules of pyruvate. Okay? Inside the cell, glucose can be converted into many other molecules. Specifically, glycolysis is a metabolic pathway by which glucose is converted into two molecules of pyruvate. Okay, there are other pathways by which glucose could uh, undertake. Okay, it can be converted into glycogen. Okay, or it can be converted into ribose. In this process, the chemical energy in the form of ATP is produced. Nicotinamide adenine diloclutide in the reduced form is also produced. So take note that in the process, these are the products that we would expect. Two molecules of pyruvate, molecules of reduced coenzyme, nicotinamide adenine dinoclutide, and we will also produce ATP. For stage 1, it's called formation of glucose 6-phosphate. When glucose enters the cell, the glucose will into glucose 6-phosphate. So the process is called phosphorylation or addition of phosphate into the glucose molecule. The source of phosphate is adenosine triphosphate. Remember that adenosine has three phosphate groups. And one of the phosphates will go to carbon number 6 of the glucose. Remember, this is our carbon number 1 and 6. And this process is catalyzed by hexokinase. Remember that hexokinase or kinase belongs to a group or a class of enzyme known as transferase. And when we say kinase, it refers to a transferase that specifically transfers phosphate group. And here's the product. The glucose is now phosphorylated on carbon number 6. This reaction is essential because basically phosphorylation of glucose traps the glucose inside the cell. Step 2 of glycolysis is known as formation of fructose 6-phosphate or simply isomerization of glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. So in this process, in this reaction, what happens is the glucose will rearrange into fructose. In order to proceed this reaction, there must be an enzyme that will catalyze the reaction and the enzyme is called an isomerase. So we have here a glucose which will rearrange into fructose. Still, the phosphate is on carbon number 6. So this reaction is essential in order to prepare the carbon number 1 for another phosphorylation. Step 3 of glycolysis is known as formation of fructose 
this phosphate. As I said earlier, the fructose 6-phosphate is formed in order for carbon number 1 to become available for the next phosphorylation. So here, in step number 3, that uh, event will take place. So the fructose 6-phosphate will now undergo another round of phosphorylation. So here, carbon number 1 is now available for that process. Phosphofructokinase is an enzyme responsible for this step. Again, the source of phosphate is ATP. One of the phosphates of ATP will be transferred to carbon number 1. Okay, and that's why the product here is called fructose 1,6-bis-phosphate. The term bisphosphate is used because there are two phosphate groups attached to the different atoms in a fructose. Unlike in adenosine diphosphate, the two phosphates are directly attached to one another. So here, you should be able to differentiate between the diphosphate and the bisphosphate. The fourth step of glycolysis is known as formation of triose phosphate. Remember, when we say triose, this refers to a sugar or carbohydrate that contains three carbon atom. So in step four of glycolysis, the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate will split into two different molecules. So remember, fructose has six carbon atoms and there are two phosphate groups on carbon 1 and carbon number 6. So the molecule will split into two molecules, namely glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and the other one is dihydroxy acetone phosphate. Each of the products have three carbon atoms. However, they are totally different compound because glyceraldehyde, this contains an aldehyde group. However, this one has a ketone group. Both of them have phosphates. And the splitting is catalyzed by an enzyme, aldolase. In previous step, we have seen that fructose 1,6-bisphosphate splits into two different molecules known as glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. In step number 5, there will be an isomerization of triose phosphate. The dihydroxyacetone will isomerize into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This molecule, the dihydroxyacetone phosphate, will simply be converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So, beginning in th this step, we are now working with two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates. Step 6 of glycolysis is known as oxidation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to glycerate 3 Phosphates. In step number 5, the dihydroxyacetone phosphate isomerizes to form glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So here, in this step, we are now working with two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So first, this reaction or this step is called oxidation. In fact, oxidation coupled with phosphorylation. So the oxidizing agent here is the NAD or the nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So the NAD oxidizes the aldehyde into a carboxylic group. You notice that uh, you have here a carboxyl group and this is coupled by phosphorylations or addition of phosphate. 
So here, you have an inorganic phosphate that will attach to the carboxyl group. That's why you have here 1,3-bisphosphate glycerate. So the phosphates are on carbon number 1 and carbon number 3. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Now, look what happens or notice what happens to the NAD that serves as oxidizing agent. So the NAD that oxidizes this reaction has been reduced to NAD+. Anything that oxidizes gets reduced. So the NAD has been reduced into NADH. For step number 7, this is now the beginning of formation or production of ATP. So here you have the molecule 1,3-bisphosphate glycerate. One of the phosphates will now detach from the molecule and it will go to, it will attach to ADP to form ATP. So we can call this, uh, this reaction energy production. In the previous steps, such as step number 1 and step number 3, those steps were energy consumption, where energy is used up. The energy in the form of ATP was used up. But here in step number 7, this is the beginning of energy production in the form of ATP. So notice that there's only one phosphate that remains in the glycerate. One of the phosphates now is added to the ADP to form ATP. The enzyme that is responsible for this process is phosphoglycerate kinase. Step 8 of glycolysis is simply rearrangement of molecule from 3-phospho to 2-phospho-glycerate. The enzyme that is responsible for this transformation is called phosphoglycerate mutase. The step 9 of glycolysis is known as formation of phosphoenol pyruvate or simply this is a process by which the 2-phosphoglycerate will undergo dehydration. This process is catalyzed by enolase. But the question is, where does the water come from? So notice that on this molecule, there's a hydroxyl group or there's an alcohol on carbon number 3. So in the process, this alcohol group is removed. Along with it, it will also carry the hydrogen from the second carbon. So this hydrogen will go along with the hydroxyl group to form water. That's why in the product, which is phosphoenol pyruvate, the second carbon has no more hydrogen, but instead it has a double bond between the second and the third carbon. That's why the name is phosphoenol in phosphoenol the in represents double bond the last step of glycolysis is known as formation of pyruvate here in this process the phosphoenol pyruvate will give up its phosphoryl group and the phosphate group will attach to adp or the adenosine diphosphate the adenosine diphosphate will now become ATP or triphosphate. This reaction was made uh, possible due to the action of an enzyme pyruvate kinase. So here, the end product is now called pyruvate. Now for the summary of glycolysis. Step 1 and step 3, they are known to be energy investment reactions or step whereas step number 7 and 10 they are the energy producing steps in step number 1 and 3 two molecules of ATP 
were consumed. Whereas in step number 7 and 10, 4 ATP were produced. Remember that in, uh, in step number 7, we are working with two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. Why two molecules? Because remember in step number 5, that was the beginning of splitting of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. That's why um, there are two ATP produced in each of the step. Step number 10, formation of pyruvate, also produces two molecules of ATP because there are um, two molecules of phosphoenol pyruvate. So, all in all, these two steps produce four molecules of ATP. However, since two molecules of ATP were consumed, therefore, the net ATP production per glucose is 2. Moreover, aside from ATP, glycolysis also produces reduced coenzyme in the form of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide in the reduced Form. Since step number 6 is oxidative phosphorylation wherein the oxidizing agent is NAD+, will be converted into NAD H. Okay, thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful and you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. See you on my next videos.